Lauren Michaels, this is a quote from Lauren Michaels. He called uh, you, Jim Downey, the best political humorist alive. Um, well, that was before the uh, birth three years ago of a hilarious child. <laughs> 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 Oglavy Johnson. <laughs> um, well, but, let's just, uh, yeah. But I, I, but I've I seen think, the kid stuff. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, uh, yeah, you're so principled and you're right. Now um, there's so much, there's so much political comedy now, which is wailing one way or the other. And I find that it's just a, uh, I don't know. It doesn't feel to me like, a satisfying time to be a comedy writer if you're trying to do politics because there's there's so much that's just yeah, the, there's a there's a temptation to enrage the audience i mean you know i mean i don't i mean personally i you know i'm i just fucking loathe trump mm -hmm. as a human being and and but it doesn't mean that every just just attacking him is, is funny mm -hmm. there are interesting ways to attack him, you know? I always like John Mulaney's thing about there's a horse loose in the hospital. That yes. kind of, I mean, yeah. just a sort of an interesting. Mulaney had a great run about Trump and his president was like, there's a horse loose in a hospital and just how odd that was. And uh, it was such it was a like great- It was like a metaphor. It was a great Trump metaphor yeah. for, for Trump being president. And what I loved about it was it captured the absurdity of it all, but it did it in this way that there was no bile it was, and, and it's very hard. You need to sometimes, it, it was purely comedic, yeah. which I loved. Yeah. So let's just end this by saying that John Mulaney is better than anyone we know. <laughs> is that the point you were trying to make? Uh, he's very good. Mm -hmm. he's very funny man. Mm -hmm. um, he, when, when Mulaney first came to the show as a writer, um, you were talking about like my, you know, I, I like to sort of identify people and I didn't, I didn't find him or hire him, but I was walking through and this is really about Mulaney and not me, but I was walking through the studio and it, by the end of my career, I was, you know, I was like, you know, 60 years old and I, I, um, you know, I, I just, you know, I, I was aware of, of the age gap between me and the, and having once been the, the very youngest writer, I was now massively the oldest writer and um so i didn't i didn't hang out i didn't do the late night things i wrote from home like you know i would i live in upstate new york near cooperstown and so i i would be at home sunday monday tuesday and then i'd write my piece and i i dictate it i always dictate my pieces because I, I they're you know they have to be spoken and they have to be speakable and they have to be you're, they're going to be heard and not read. And so you need to, in, in, when I'm dictating them, I'm changing them. I go, oh, wait a minute, hang on, I'm changing, you know? And anyway, so they, they, they have it to read through and then I'm, I'm told if it's in or not. And if it's in, I drive down to New York. And anyway, so I was in the studio on Saturday and I don't even, I'm not even sure I'd met Mulaney. It was like the second show. And I'm walking through the studio and I'm, and they're rehearsing one of his, he had a piece on, I think it was like his, his second show and he had a this 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 hilarious piece on and it's a great sort of it was a um the host was um uh tim mcgraw and and he who's a really good actor very funny guy and he it was like a a country kind of um it was like a a a, a show where he does like practical jokes mm -hmm. but he's such a a soft-hearted sweet guy he keeps like apologizing <laughs> for it's hard to explain you yeah, have yeah, to see the sure. piece but and i heard it and i know this makes me sound like an arrogant asshole but it reminded me of that there was a story about ted williams um when hank aaron was a rookie ted williams is playing uh he was somehow involved in the, i didn't know they had interleague games or anything but but um, Hank Aaron is, is, is warming up and Ted Williams is sitting in the dugout and hears from the way the ball is coming off Hank Aaron's bat that he's never heard that before. Mm -hmm. And he storms out there, Who's, who was just taking batting practice? And it was Hank Aaron and, and Ted Williams like, and I sort of had that, it was akin to that. I'm not comparing myself to Ted Williams. No. I am comparing John Mulaney to Hank Aaron though. He's but a lot I, like Hank Aaron. And, but I, 
I'm saying that I, I walking through the studio and I hear this and I go, that's a new writer. That's a new, we don't, that's not a writer I know. Yeah. Yeah. That's, we have a new writer or a guest writer. Cause that, that wasn't, that's not, and I'm listening to the piece and I go, that was not written by a writer whose work I'm so, and I was that's right. Cool. I was right. Cool. It turned out it was, it was, um, John and he went on to write a lot of great stuff. And, yeah. um, and then he's trying stand up, but <laughs> you know, whatever. He's yes. young. He's, he's young. young. He'll get it. He'll get it. He will get it. Hang in there, sir.